Northumberland is quite unique in, in England for the, the cup and ring mark rock art, which, which is found on sandstone outcrops, uh, usually on the hillsides with quite extensive views. I spent a lot of time trying to find out of the way places, usually from the Neolithic, Bronze Age and Iron Age, so hill forts, standing stones, burial mounds, and I would go off with my tent quite often for four or five days to find some of these quite hidden places up in the Cheviot Hills. These were made in the Neolithic and Bronze Age, in a time when people have just started to settle down really from, from being full-time uh, hunter-gatherers to being settled upon the land and I think there's various um, interpretations of these uh, sites but generally they, they, they're quite a cryptic thing which, which allows people to come up with a whole sort of array of um, interpretations which I find quite interesting. So there's very wide open spaces. It's mostly very low intensity farming. So sheep farming on, on the moorlands up here. And basically that means that a lot of the old sites that haven't been tampered with by um, farmers because the, the land is essentially being left as it is with lots of dry stone walls and low population density as well, which means that you're pretty much free to roam where you want to try and find these sites. For me, it's um, maybe this innate need that people have always had to, to make art, I'd say, just in, in a very simple way, leaving their mark on the landscape. There's something quite beautiful about them, how minimal the, the designs are. They're very nicely situated as well. They're, they're, they're up on hillsides with these very extensive views. And if you're up on one of these sites, you, you've often got very good views towards the Cheviots. So that's, uh, again, they're, they're nice places to go and spend time and you can draw them and you can paint them and become more familiar with the actual the, the subtleties of these, these marks, these basic vocabulary of marks. So I, I could start to see uh, specific structures maybe in the landscape. So some of the areas where there's crags, you, you, you don't really appreciate them until you're quite up close and then you start to see these eroded forms. Around these areas, there's always the structure of sheep stells, the dry stone walls, various other elements that are quite distinct to the area. So they kind of form a sort of a map a linear map on, onto the landscape that I was quite attracted to when I was out drawing. And even just local streams, or, which will obviously be called burns up here, or sykes or various other names. They're also very interesting little hidden places within the landscape, within the folds of the, the moorland with very specific trees and, and, and ecosystems again. So there's lots of hidden places within, within a very short distance of, of this area and yet it doesn't really shout out at you when you first come here. It takes quite a while to, um, to take effect, learning to, to really read all, all the different elements over, over the span of a year has been quite a, a sort of a, uh, intensive study for me and, and that, that's, that's something I would definitely take away as, as it's been translated into my work and, and in sketches then filtering through into the, the paintings. So I start off with the the exploring of the landscape, obviously, you know, trying to experience it firsthand. When I'm doing that, I take a lot of photographs 
and I like to take my sketchbook, do quite a lot of drawings in the felt tip pen. And once I've taken that material back to the studio, I tend to make a series of small paintings, usually starting with maybe a marbled varnish um, surface that's already got a, a certain texture to it. And then I draw into that with these permanent pens. I allow things to build up over quite a long period. So I'll be working on one painting of a, of a landscape and then I will put that away, pick up another painting from a couple of weeks back and start working onto that. Because I've got a lot of paintings on the go at the same time and I'm trying out different materials, I'll often have uh, quite different effects from maybe using very glossy resin on one painting to, to very matte flat oil paint on another and when these elements start to interact with each other that's towards the end of the painting and the painting seems to come alive for me then when I have a variety of different techniques and surfaces coming together in, in ways that I didn't necessarily plan. So I'm all the time trying to build up different surfaces and see where the painting goes on a more sort of spontaneous level. I tend to use motifs, compositions from romantic painting or pastoral painting and that's obviously going back some time so I'm looking at a lot of older painters but I try and use materials in a more contemporary way, use them in the wrong order so the paint blisters or the varnish wrinkles, uh, things get obscured. I do things to deliberately make the painting a little bit more difficult for me and, and and then build up this strange surface again that might, might help the painting or it might also ruin it, but I like taking risks. So that's a more contemporary approach to, to materials just to experiment and, and to create more of a sense of, of an artificial construction, which, which my paintings are. They're not really trying to be too naturalistic. I, I, like, I like the colors to be a bit acidic sometimes or, or to suggest a, a more artificial world than, than what you would normally expect with traditional landscape painting which, which is quite often to do with a, a more easy view of, of, the, of, of the landscape as, as being a sort of refuge or, um, or a place of contemplation. I like there to be unstable elements, maybe a sense of claustrophobia, maybe a sense of pollution, environmental degradation to rub up against the more pleasing aspects of the landscape which, which are intrinsic in, in this landscape around here, the Cheviots. It's very beautiful, it's a national park. So I don't want to produce work that is, is too in awe of that, although I'm quite happy to, to approach that in certain paintings. I, but I, I do like to try and get a, a balance between, between the artificial and the natural. Ah. 